Aloha in our day Spread a little aloha around the world And breakfast with Bob Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome everybody back to Breakfast with Bob, Not Quite Kona edition. We are brought to you by Hoka One One by Master Spas. Clash Endurance. You can hyper ice premium plus sports form smart swim goggles. And of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation we just sent out. 3,038 grants totaling $5.1 million to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. Gentlemen, I've been wanting to interview you for a very long time. He is the reigning Olympic gold and silver medalist from this past uh, Olympic Games in triathlon, and he won Super League just re- recently as well. Alex Yi joins us. Alex, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thanks, first of all, for having me. Uh... I know you have a lot of long course uh, athletes on, so I feel honored to be one of the few short course athletes to be kind of on the show. We love the short course athletes. Actually, going back, Alistair and Johnny and Javier Gomez and all of basically all the long course guys, where'd they start? They started at the Olympics and they started short this course. This is true. This is true. Yeah, yeah. So, talk a little bit about when you were growing up, was Running number one, was that your main sport? And when did triathlon come into your world? Well, so actually, for me, triathlon was kind of the first thing I started with. So uh, my dad did a bit of duathlon. uh, And I remember going to a few domestic races in the UK and watching them fly past and really wanted to give it a go. Uh, And I guess like a lot of people, you're always inspired by your dad and you want to be like your dad. So for me, uh, there came an opportunity where I could go down to the first ever junior session uh, held at Crystal Palace, which is my local triathlon club, and I really jumped at it. And I really enjoyed the challenge of doing the three different sports. I was certainly not the best there, and I I really enjoyed that the fact that I could run against people and challenge myself uh, internally, not just um, against other people as well. And yeah, for, for me, that's kind of where it all grew from. Did now were you aware of the the Brownlee brothers? Were the, obviously after what uh, Alistair winning two golds and. And Johnny meddling in both 12 and 16, were they sort of the role models early on? Yeah, definitely. For me, I guess, um, luckily having, being a London boy and having 2012 in Olympic Games in London, for me, I really feel like a product of that kind of Olympics because, yeah, for me to be able to get on the, the underground, which is our kind of local train line and and, and arrive at an Olympic venue and watch Alistair and Johnny fly past and feel the energy of the crowd and just see, yeah, just just feel kind of the magic of the Olympic Games. I, I, I really, yeah, caught a bug from there. And they, they've definitely been two of the people who've really inspired me and a, a load of other guys who are competing there, like uh, I guess the likes of Jan and Vincent, Louis as well. They're, they're all huge, yeah, inspirations to me. So 2016, you win the uh, Junior Duathlon, World Junior Duathlon Championships. You received the One to Watch Award from Mo Far- Farah, a <laughs> legend. So, it, it, and then um, in 17, you had a pretty bad crash, right? Uh, Cagliari, you crashed, broke your ribs, vertebrae, collapsed long. Uh, and what always, what I love is, I think as a year later, you went back to that race and did well in the same race. Was that hard going back and doing that same race again? Um, I'd say f- for me, um, almost immediately after the crash, I knew I wanted to go back there and kind of conquer those demons because I guess um, if I, I feel as though if I didn't go back there, then I would have uh, always had a bit of me that kind of I'd left, I'd left back there and I, 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 yeah, maybe my confidence wouldn't quite be the mm-hmm. same and stuff like that. So for me to go around there and race there, I, and I think it came eight figs qualified yeah. me for the, yeah, for the, the under 23 worlds, um, that year, little things like that, just, just though they don't look like the best results in the world, they, they really do mean a lot to you as an athlete. And for me, it kind of almost was more than the race itself. It was almost kind of conquering the injury I had, the crash, the nerves, all of those little things. So yeah, for, for me, that was kind of a proud moment in my career. Well, another proud moment, 2018 yeah, in May, 2751 <laughs> for Ted Kane, <laughs> five seconds off of David Bedford's under 23 record. I mean, at that point, 
did you start thinking, well, can I double? Can I go to the Olympics in the 10,000 and or potentially 5,000 and triathlon? Or was it always, I'm going to focus on try? I mean, at that point, I was probably closer to uh, qualifying for the Olympics at, at um, the, the 10K rather than the triathlon. So for me, there definitely was an appeal about it. And I remember Sebco coming up to me after the race, actually, and just having a quick chat with me and saying, you do realize if that was if it was an Olympic year this year, you'd be going to kind of Tokyo. And, and I was like, wow, this is a bit bizarre and surreal. Um, and I ended up racing the Europeans that year and, uh, and experiencing a bit of kind of senior competition for track. But, but for me, fundamentally, I, I really felt like I had the opportunity at triathlon and, uh, fundamentally the lifestyle I love is swimming, biking and running. So, for me, I feel like that complements my running definitely, but I definitely felt like I'd unfinished business with triathlon and luckily I, I, I stuck with it. Well, and then 2018, sixth of Grand Canaria, uh, ETU, Sprint Tri, European uh, Cup, and of course the eighth we talked about at Cagliari after coming back from the crash. Under 23, ITU World Tri, Grand Final, 10th. That's, uh, that's, that, that's pretty impressive. Then you get your first podium at, the, at Gold Coast. So things are moving, moving up. You're bronze there, and then move, then moving to the WTS series in 2019, and debuting and having the second fastest 5K. It took second in the race to Mario Mola. Now you're on the. Now you're not just participating. You're one of the guys to beat. Could you feel that? Could you feel there was a way people looked at you was a little different? Um, not as such that that year. I'd say for me, I just had a an extreme excitement about the people I was racing. The, these are my idols. These guys are the people I watched on the telly for the last 10 years. And yeah. I'm in a race to win a world series against Mario Mola, who's one of my kind of biggest kind of well, idols and in the sport. So for me, that excitement was just, uh, was crazy. And, and for me, I could, I found it hard to comprehend kind of what I was doing. And, um, yeah, I definitely would say that um, maybe that was one of the th my downfalls that year was maybe just not too much respect, but maybe just um, not believing in myself enough to kind of really take that next step and believe that I could beat kind of my idols and stuff like that. So I think for me, it was really big and steep learning curve that year to kind of moving on to that next um, kind of stage, which was kind of, the, yeah, the top level. Yeah, and then uh, 2019, fifth at WTS Yokohama. That was your first Olympic distance race. Uh, you just keep you keep doing great stuff. 13th in the grand final in Lausanne, 12th in the series. So now, of course, everything's going the right direction. Then the world shuts down with COVID. How did, how did you handle that? Just knowing that, okay, it's not going to happen this year. You're young, so 2021 isn't that far away. But still, it's it's hard when you're on that type of role. You're ready for Olympics now, and to wait that year was that hard for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, for for me, um, like any other athlete, I'm sure they found it tough initially. But I think the perspective of kind of particularly in the UK, we had kind of quite bad COVID cases and stuff like that, and you see stuff in the news, and it quite could, quickly gives you a perspective that what you're doing is 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 important, really important to you and the people around you. But this is a global pandemic. This is um, happening all around the world. This is a really serious event. So for me, first and foremost, I just wanted to make, well, yeah, respect kind of what was going on around me and kind of appreciate that. Um, but it also, in, in a way, was a, a really good opportunity for me to kind of take a step back and, and really work on, um, yeah, my, my, my free disciplines and, and hone my craft. And for me, I'd almost feel like that extra year gave me a real advantage going into the, the next year of the Olympics because I have definitely haven't trained as many Ks in the pool or on the bike or in the run as all the other guys. So another year under my belt's never a bad thing. And I, I fundamentally just love what I'm doing in the training. So for me, that extra year was just another year of enjoying what I was doing. And um, we luckily got to race at the end of it and I did some, did some running as well. So I, I I really enjoyed the kind of change of what was going on. And it, I feel like it really worked in my favor as well. Well, you did some running. You ran 1326 at the podium 5K. And then you go, what, 745 for the 3000. So 
obviously you in this day and age to to win WTS races, to win medals, you have to be that type of runner. It, it's the sport has changed. And I think the Brownleys did a lot to, to, to make that happen where you've got to ride. You've, you can't just swim, cruise around on the bike and then try to run fast. You've got to hammer the bike. You've got to, you've, you've got to be able to run, you know, 28 minutes off the bike. How have you taken what you've accomplished in running and translated that over to the triathlon side? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. I, I think for me, fundamentally, uh, the big challenge has been unlocking my full run potential, oh, just uh, doing that exclusively, uh, including the swim and the bike as well. And for me, that's been kind of the long term project. And that's been massively about just making sure I become the best swim bike, uh, swim biker I can physically be uh, in the current climate of where kind of triathlons at, whereas um, the, sw the swim's fast, the bikes are hard and technical and there's a lot of stochastic um, kind of spikes that you have to do during a, a bike race. And uh, for me, it's analysing the kind of courses and, and demands of the races itself and then uh, allowing myself from kind of all standpoints, whether that's nutrition, physiology, um, to, to kind of really unlock my full potential of running because I feel like even now I still have a lot of kind of weight, a lot of kind of more speed to unlock off the bike, though it's, mm -hmm. it's going, going well at the moment. I feel like I have more to give. And I, and I, I think that's one of the things which kind of really gets me out of bed is that kind of motivation to run faster off the bike and, and just kind of unlock what I, I well, yeah, the gift I've been given. So I was watching Super League in Malibu and you know, you won that series. Uh, you won that the final race by 0.2 of a of a second at the, that sprint. And I swear to God, I've watched that video. I don't know how many times I'm going. There's no way he can catch that group, right? There's no way you're gonna you get you get those guys. And you did. I mean, you've got a gear that I don't think I've ever seen before at the at, at the end of a race. Did you feel that you were gonna you were gonna be able to out sprint those guys down the down the stretch? Well, it's always hard to say with with different athletes and uh, different abilities. You never really know what somebody's got right at the end of a race because I guess you've you've just raced all out for the whole <laughs> for the last twenty five minutes uh, to an hour. Um, but but yeah, for me, I, I'd always love to say that I'd back my kind of track background and stuff like that. I like to think that I, I the way the way I well, particularly in in Malibu, I feel like I navigated the the last few corners quite well, which actually meant yes. I could carry more speed going into the final corners and there's less acceleration and those kind of things where you're quite thorough, I think always paid evidence at the end. So for me, that was a, a massive thing was just kind of, yeah, being thorough with kind of what I was doing. And I, I knew there would probably be some, yeah, it would, it would end up in that kind of, yeah, sprint finish. So, so for me, it, it worked out really well and, it doesn't always work like that, I, I've got to admit. So, um, yeah, it's nice when it does go well. So, speaking of one where you probably go going, what could I have done differently? I don't, I don't think you could have done anything. You won the silver medal in the Olympics. Christian Blumenthal felt when we were watching, well, first of all, you had the fall start and the swim, which a number of a number of people jumped. You were one of the guys who swam, what, 150 meters or so before <laughs> they turned you around. Um, but knowing your mindset, it's like, what can you do? You just sort of have to get back up on the – on the podium and, and dive off again. But during the, the, the bike, you pretty much had to shoulder the load and, and, and catch back up to that lead group. Uh, were you getting much help on the bike or are you pretty much doing it yourself? Um, I mean, there was a little bit of help from a few different, three different guys. I think Aaron Royal was working quite well. Mm -hmm. Christian did his fair share, Casper uh, Storms as well, and up in Norwegian. Um, but yeah, I definitely say I did a, did a, a, my fair share of the work. I, I feel quite proud in that sense that I don't want to go to the Olympics and just be known as the guy who just sat on and just made the swim, just made the bike and then wins on the run. I want to be seen as kind of an athlete who, who isn't yeah, just that. And I can, I can swim. I can, I, I feel like I want to show that I can swim, I can bike and then I can also run as well. So for me, I, I'd always... Yeah, I wouldn't look back 
back at that as a regret. And um, you never know if I hadn't have pulled the turns, we might not have made the front. Uh, we probably would have because Christian seemed to have a big master plan. But um, yeah, I mean, Christian was incredible on that day. And uh, the way he kicked past me, I've never seen anything like it in, in our sport. So fair play to him. It was really, really incredible to see. And I, I feel, yeah, really proud to be kind of part of one of, one of, I feel quite an exciting Olympic Games. Well, what shows a lot of class is your quote afterwards was he was the better man of the day, but I was as well prepared as I could be. It is in 2000 at the first ever Olympic triathlon, McKeeley Jones got the silver medal. And people are like, oh, I feel so bad for you. She says, no, no, I won the silver medal. I, I don't, it didn't, I did as good as I could do. I trained as well as I could do. On that particular day, Christian Blumenthal was, was just, what, 11 seconds better. It was just that, that yeah. was it. That what you can't, can't do anything about it. But what I love is when we were watching it, I'm going, someone's nobody wants you right with them as they're coming towards the finish line. But you knew that those guys were having to get rid of you. And there's what going into the last lap, you did a lot of work to get it down to four guys, right? Didn't Christian talk to you during the going into that last lap? Hey, let's get rid of some of these guys. Yeah. Christian actually said to me, This is the podium, like come on, keep pushing. And for me, the excitement of kind of that, that was like, oh, wow, we're, we're, this is the, this, these are the medals now. This is me, Hayden and Christian. And then you know, I almost forget about kind of, we can also race for the win and stuff like that. So at that point, I definitely did get carried away and we all opened up this, well, kind of balloon this gap out uh, to Martin, who was, who was in fourth. And uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I was just living my dream in a way. Like, it was just so exciting what was going on. And though I, my legs were screaming, my lungs were screaming, and I was probably not quite with it in my head, um, I was just absolutely loving kind of what I was doing. And uh, for me to kind of come from, yeah, 2017, 2018, where I'm unsure of kind of whether I'm going to be in triathlon, to be in a position where I'm going to win an Olympic medal of some colour, it was yeah, a pretty surreal moment. So yeah, it's just real cool to, to be there. <laughs> so cool. And then for the first time ever, we have a second event in the Olympics, the mixed relay, which is so much fun. I think it's so good for the sport, just so, so fast and furious and two men, two women, just, just representing their country. And you guys take the gold with you anchoring. So you got to break the tape at the Olympic games, right? That, that had to be an awesome yeah. thing. Glory leg, glory leg for me. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't an easy one, but it was. It, oh, those guys were incredible. The first, the first three guys, Jess, Georgia, um, and Johnny as well. The way they they led me out, uh, anything less than gold would have been an injustice to them because they they were all incredible. So, so for me, it was yeah, just a case of kind of managing the the gap up to to Vincent, and then also making sure when he came past, I could get on the wheel, and I think. Uh, a lot of people have said that was a really exciting moment in the race. So, so yeah, it was it was just really cool to be able to to kind of rub shoulders with him again. I, he's a massive inspiration for me. So, so to to be able to rub shoulders with him and Morgan as well was racing incredibly well. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just it was just really cool, and I I feel that, that I, as well throughout all most of the Olympic sports, that the mixed team relay seemed to be received really really well in the UK and the excitement about triathlon was was re was really cool to see in, in the UK and I'm sure it's the same in the US and yeah. and stuff like that so for, uh, yeah for me if if people are talking about triathlon enjoying it um wanting to partake I think that's a win for for all of us and yeah for us to win the gold medal was yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre it's bizarre so you're 23 years old. You come home from your first Olympic experience with a gold and a silver. You really can't much do much better than that. How, how has your life changed? Has there been just more demands on your time or just did you settle right back into training? What did you do with post-Olympics? Uh, well, I mean, for Besides me. Besides Super I, League, obviously. Yeah, right <laughs> Super League. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't have much rest the, before Super League. <laughs> I also had the grand final coming up as well, which was kind of, uh, a massive goal for me I was ranked number one in the world at that point and for me I was like wow I could win a, a world title uh, but then I definitely feel like 
maybe the emotion of the Olympics and mm. and also the maybe some of the demands of of what comes after that, which was uh, amazing and really enjoyable. I think maybe got the better of me at, at the grand final, and I really think I suffered and uh, in that sense. And I I feel like that was a almost a blessing in a way because it really taught me how to kind of manage kind of the expectation that I I now have after the Olympics going into Super League and. For me, I, I definitely felt like I learned throughout the rounds how to manage all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it ended up, uh, yeah, ending really well where I, in Malibu I could, yeah, win. And I, I think another important thing for me is that um, I just don't want things to change too much because fundamentally I, what what kind of got me to the Olympic medal is, is working. and um, I'm just really loving what I'm doing. And I, I love the simplicity. I love the hustle. Uh, I'm, I'm still renting a house. I don't own a car. All those little things I think are really cool. Like I have to find a way to get to training and have incredible friends around me and, and training partners and we all push each other on. And I, I, I love that kind of stuff. And I think that's that keeps you humble and it keeps you hungry. And I think um doesn't matter what you've achieved, you've always got to be hungry and you've always got to be kind of look more not you've got to be able to enjoy what, what you've achieved, but also look forward to to kind of how you can better yourself and always be trying to improve. Do you find yourself, are you one of those guys who likes to train with a group or you, you want to like train by yourself? I love training with a group. I think and I love um, the fact that we can kind of bring each other on and there's not going to be, a, there's always going to be a day when you're not feeling good and someone else is. And I think the energy that someone else can bring to you is always, yeah. Um, yeah. Invaluable in, in a way. And I've, I really appreciate the kind of group of guys that are around me. They've sacrificed a lot for me into the Olympics and I, I'll do the same for them to, to kind of further their aspirations and their goals. And, that. and yeah, I love the fact that we it, you can give into it and then also take um, from a group. And yeah, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the guys that are around me. And uh, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so does your dad take credit for getting you into the sport? Hey, listen, I was doing this stuff before you. And this gold medal is gold and silver. You can keep the gold, but I'll take the silver. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Um, no, no, that my mom and dad are, are really good role models for me. They're, they're really humble people and they, they kind of uh, help me with my endeavors, but then also didn't push me too much. They, they let me have my fair share of time on a mountain bike before they gave me, they got me a road bike and little things like that. And I still had to, kind of run to the odd training session or find a way of getting there on public transport. And I think that those little things um, being raised by your parents are so important that they're, 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 they're in your corner, but they're also making you kind of find a way. And, and, and I think that's really valuable. And yeah, I guess my, my dad did the right sport uh, to kind of get me here. And <laughs> yeah, I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> what did the Brownlee say to you afterward? Did you hear from Alistair after you got the, the gold and silver? Uh, so Alistair was actually watching the the silver medal uh, race. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure he was watching um, the mixed relay as well. But I yeah. didn't see him. But all when when I walked past Alistair, he just went like this and just put his <laughs> thumbs up in the air. And I was and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool to get the approval from him. And uh, he's obviously yeah he's incredible athlete, and he's achieved so much. Um, and I think we we both have a lot of respect for each other. I guess there was a lot. Of, uh, emotion riding on kind of going into the, the Leeds race whether who was going to be selected for, for the Olympics so so for us to still have that respect I think it's really admirable from him and yeah kudos to him yeah that Leeds race was you know you're in his hometown right and that that was that was a that was the pivotal moment of who's going to make the Olympic team because you guys are deep you've got a lot of great athletes yeah definitely and unfortunately we only had two spots so Johnny uh, rightfully so had already been selected and uh, then I guess it was between, well, there's a few others. I guess there was Tom Bishop as well, who, who raced incredibly well. And, um, then also myself and Alistair kind of going into that Leeds race. And, uh, I, I'd, I'd spent three years prior to, to kind of moving to Loughborough and in, in Leeds. And I really felt like I'd learn a lot from those guys. And, uh, for, for me to go back there and, and race so well, um, yeah. And, and win. And yeah, it was, it was, it was a pretty cool moment. And, uh, I guess it was one of those moments where I really started to believe in myself and believe I could do something. So, so for me, that was, that was really special. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just exciting. So next, this next year, WTF, Super League, what, uh, what are the plans? 
Uh, at the moment, I guess the calendar for Super League and uh, World Travel is still being announced. So for me, I'm going to try and amalgamate the two and kind of get the, be- the kind of best out of myself and Olympic uh, points and selection starts next year. So we're going to have to make sure we're somewhere on the Olympic rankings uh, within reason to kind of get those three spots uh, for the next um, Olympic cycle. But for us, a massive one, a massive thing in in England and the UK is the Commonwealth Games. And we've got the Commonwealth Games in uh, in the UK, in Birmingham uh, next year. So for us to have a home games, I'd, I'd really, really love to, to race the best mobility there and give it a real good go. So for me, that's going to be a massive goal for me. And um, also just making sure that I'm improving in myself and getting better and uh, yeah, hopefully coming off, off the bike and at the front of races and as many as I can. And um, yeah, hopefully that was something good said, kind of going on to the future races and future years and to kind of, I guess, 2024 and, and beyond. So do you see 20, are you a, okay, I'm going to be doing Olympics in Paris, maybe Olympics in LA. Cause you're still so young. I mean, really LA is not that far out of the range too. Do you see yourself moving to different distances or you see yourself as, you know, cause at this point, there's really no need. You can stay in, and be an Olympic distance, sprint distance athlete and not have to go to 70.3 or full Ironman. Um, so for me, I feel, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I just really feel like I, I still have a lot of unexplored potential, I guess, in, in the short course format and, Sorry, I got. <laughs> I got something in your throat. Not a problem. <laughs> I've got something in my throat. I, I think the key um, is to stay with short distance for as long as you can. There's no reason. Yeah, to yeah. So, longer yeah, so until you feel like you can't win at the shorter distance. And I'm just really loving it and enjoying what I'm doing. And I feel like I still have something in me which I, I still haven't unlocked, and and that excites me. And and I'm still really enjoying the training. And uh, yeah, ho- hopefully it, it can last as. Yeah, a good few years. Will you jump into occasional 5Ks and 10Ks as well just to see where you're at? I mean, f- for me, like I, I have an undeniable romance with the track and um, hopefully that can continue and I'd love to to kind of see where I'm at. And I, I feel like I'm a better runner than I was when I ran my 10K in 2018 and technology's changed since then. I guess there was no carbon spikes then and stuff like that. So for me, I, I would be really excited to kind of throw myself in the deep end and, and get involved in that as well. So hopefully that's uh, going to happen as well. You know, what's funny is I, I've always been a proponent that if that you can, people can run less and run better by mixing in swimming and cycling the, that a lot of people who just run, they break down. But for someone like yourself, you're proof positive that if you, you know, you focus on swim, bike and run and you can, you can run fast and not do as many just straight run workouts. Yeah, definitely. I think that I, I, I'm lucky that I, I get a lot of aerobic fitness just from doing the swim and the bike. And uh, yeah, I still do kind of 60, 70 miles of running a, a week anyway. So I feel like that still keeps the, the speed of my legs. And um, yeah, I seem to respond really well to, to running on the track and stuff like that. So Yes, for me, I, it's, it's worked and it's been a formula which I've used kind of all my life. So uh, I, I don't see a reason to change it. And hopefully it can kind of help me kind of push on myself and, yeah, get get quicker. Love it. Alex, thank you so much for taking time and chatting. I love what you bring to the sport. You bring an energy. You bring a talent. Obviously, you love it. You've been even though you're young, you've basically been in this sport for a decade, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, yeah, I really love it. I really hope that I can kind of do a similar thing that Alan John did for me in 2012 and inspire people to kind of get involved. And uh, I feel massively passionate about kind of the future of our sport and and just people getting participating in triathlon and the kind of state of the sport and stuff. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for having me. And yes, yes, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank That's all much. that matters. Enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> Olympic gold and silver Super League champion. Alex Yee has been our guest. Alex, thank you so much for joining us again. Breakfast with Bob, not quite Kona edition. We'll catch everybody next time. See ya.